Oh, it's already thinking. It's 7 oh, no, no, a.m. No, no. <laughs> What's your name? John. Thanks, John. No. It, it is 7.30 the next day. I had about four, four and a half hours of sleep. Sorry, I'm trying to get my backpack on. It, um, I feel awful. My makeup is very minimal today. Also, the lighting here is awful. Um, my hair is up. It's all of the tricks to make myself look uh, relatively presentable for the day. It was really a thing of like, get your makeup on as fast as possible and get out. The uh, video I worked out last night hasn't uploaded yet because the Western internet, I have to enter my password every night for some reason. It won't continually remember it day to day. Turns out it crops out at about 3 a.m. So I started uploading my video when I went to bed. It uploaded for about 30 minutes and then the internet died. So I woke up this morning and I had to enter all the things and re-upload it and hopefully, because I have to leave the room now, hopefully it'll just do its thing and magically be up and on the internet in about two or three hours. I'm currently at um, the Capitol Browns um, coffee shop. Coffee. I went to customer service because it was like zero line like you just saw to return a couple of tickets that I've been trying to return forever but you know and also I would like to point out that this behind me is the will call line no more line at all I mean <laughs> I realize it's Friday I don't know if you can wait that long but there's no will call line yay um, yeah so I've been meaning to return a couple of tickets for later today and tomorrow and uh, my eyes watering so I just did that. It took 30 seconds, which is amazing because there's been a line forever. There you are. <laughs> finished our RPG which was Call of Cthulhu um, I think it was called uh, High on Catnip Mountain and uh, the game is really adorable and cute and you get to play regular house cats doing weird stuff and you don't have like superpowers or anything like that you're just a regular cat I got interrupted earlier but I wanted to tell you about my Cthulhu RPG and uh, spoiler alert it wasn't super great what ended up happening is that 10 people showed up for the rpg um i think six tickets were sold six people showed up but the gm also accepted like four players with generic tickets luckily one person uh, bowed out so it ended up being just nine players but that's still a lot for an rpg rpg was scheduled for four hours so many so many weird things happened um that are just unfortunate and maybe the gm is either inexperienced or just used to running rpgs in a very specific way that are not the best for the way conventions are run i mean rpgs at conventions are run so what happened was that a lot of you know first of all there's nine players one gm so that already creates issues with everybody being heard and being able to say things and role play and enjoy the game effectively but in addition the GM was focusing very much so on the players that were vocal and not really at all on the players that were quiet and everybody has a different play style and game style and comfort level even they may not be shy they may just be polite and quiet so um, a good GM can uh, a good GM will be able to work with everybody at the table not just the people who are talking but also be like hey you haven't said anything would you like to do something? Do you have some input? But he never really did that very much. And some of that is because there were nine players, but some of that was also like just bad GMing. Secondly, there was one character, so it's Cthulhu, we're all house cats, except one character was a dog ghost. So he was incorporeal, couldn't touch things, couldn't be heard talking. And um, so the, the guy playing the dog ghost character tried several things to do several things and interact with things and do something and accomplish something but everything that he tried he was turned down on it was just like nope can't do that can't do that can't do that 
um, some of the challenge were just for us were to get across a chasm or something and the dog just floated across but so he could accomplish that but he couldn't interact with us or anything and instead of the GM taking a moment to be like hey I realize there's a lot of things you can't do but you could do these types of things and what happened in the end was that the player of that character just sat there for the duration of the game and really didn't do anything at all you know our team goes and tries to do a thing and essentially it's like lots of puzzles or fights and you overcome one thing and then go to the next and um, the very first scene we're in we're going around the house we're supposed to I don't know, we're not quite sure what we're supposed to encounter, but we're messing around with the things that he described in the scene. And he, he mentioned a couple of things in passing, so we start interacting with those. And after a couple of minutes, we haven't really fully finished with that part yet, but he's like, guys, you're not seeing the sign. There's a little note there that I told you about, and you're just not, you're just not looking at it. And it's like, I realize that's the thing we were supposed to find, but how about you make us do a spot check or give us some hints about you're supposed to look over in that direction. None of that, just, guys, you guys are dumb. It was more like, it was a little condescending, like, guys, you're not listening to me, you have to go over there. It's like, well, maybe you're not talking to us or giving us the clues in the right way. And this kind of kept happening over and over again. There was another time where we were trying to cross a bridge and we couldn't get across it and we were kind of hit a wall. And instead of just kind of giving us a hint, he would be like, guys, guys, you're not understanding this. You have to go back to the thing, do that thing, and then you can come back and cross the bridge. But there was a really easy way to demonstrate what we had to do that I can come up with. And it was a very easy way to give us that clue without like being like, guys, you're just not seeing it. Here's the answer. Like the fun of it is trying to, to get the answer. And if they're not getting it, try and help people out. And this happened like two or three times where he's like, oh, whatever. And at some point, my character actually died. And that I was totally fine with that. I died in the most epic, cool, ridiculous way. I loved it. And, um, and whatever, that was fine. I was happy being dead. I, I'd done the thing I really wanted to do. I guess I turned into a cat ghost eventually, but um, he talked to me and he's like, hey, so there's a door with a light on it. And the door, you can hear a voice that says, come to me, there's a, we have a, a dog that hates cats or something like that. And I'm like, well, no, I'm not going to that door. And he just threw down his piece of paper and was like, I'm trying to help you here. I'm trying to help you figure this out. And I guess I was supposed to go through the door to stay alive, but in no way did he make that clear. Like, of course you wouldn't go through the door if I'm a cat and there's a dog that is gonna hurt me. I didn't, I didn't understand and he was frustrated with me and then immediately after that and we are two hours into our four hour gaming session he is like hey guys do you want to continue down this path and we're like yeah sure there's two hours left of this game and he's like oh. okay well look guys let me just tell you that you keep encountering these things and what you guys haven't figured out yet is that there's no end to them you're going to continue encountering challenges and the whole point is that you guys give up at some point and return home and we're like oh yeah, we hadn't figured that out yet. And he's like, well, I, that, that's the whole point. So we can just end the game here. So um, there's two things that if you encounter a game like that, that you can do and you're unsatisfied. And there's two kind of levels. So if it's very severe, if you think that you're being made to feel uncomfortable or harassed or something's egregiously wrong, um, like you had a ticket and the guy just wouldn't let you in or something along those lines, uh, file a complaint with, with Gen Con. You can email them events at gencon.com. You can go to GMHQ or customer service or something like that and file an actual complaint. Uh, for me, though, it just wasn't a great experience. Uh, what you do in that case is you email events at gencon.com with your summary of what you felt like the event was and maybe some feedback on how it could have been improved. And uh, sometimes what Gen Con will do is forward your email straight to that GM, um, I, I, I believe anonymously. And then hopefully that GM in the future can improve and Gen Con is aware and keep an eye on those types of events to provide a better experience going forward. So that's what I recommend doing. That's what I'm going to do later today. Ramsey. You want to say hi?
hide anyone? Your wife? I will say hi to my wife. Yeah, she didn't, wasn't able to make it out. Oh. Yeah. Well, now you can show her the video, and she was here in Spirit. Yes, she was. <laughs> Thank you. You made hi. this a lot easier figuring out our first con. Awesome. So. Thanks for saying that. Appreciate it. Thank have you so much. Guys. You have one rare left. Oh. One. You want to take some of mine? Is that what it is? I, mean, I don't know. Do you have extras? Yes. Oh, you are the guys. Did, were you the guys that told Derek that we met Derek? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was like two people were like, Derek, Derek, we yep. love Nelly. <laughs> yeah, yes. We told him to tell oh, you. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, I'll bring some games. We'll have fun. Sounds great. Okay. I'm really excited. Uh, what's your name? I'm Jessica. I'm Matt. Matt. Awesome. Uh, I'll see you guys then. Yes. Right. Yeah. Bye. Bye. This is what it's like trying to walk through the exhibit hall with this guy. He's wonderful. But he always wants to walk the hall with me and then we got stopped every couple of minutes because he has to take a call or check in with an exhibitor about their events or his walkie-talkie is going. Uh, it is slow progress. Um, currently, we have been here for about an hour and a bit and we have done a grand total of one and a half uh, rows of the exhibitor hall. Talk was really great. Um, he's probably going to be putting that on his YouTube channel. 
but I highly recommend it. We spent some time and actually created um, like a world and a premise and some details for like a game that we could run as a panel and it was really cool. It was, he did a really good job. He, I can tell why he is so successful and so awesome and why is, I can tell why his YouTube channel and him as a personality has been so successful because he really does know how to speak and how to articulate himself and uh, on top of that he has really good ideas and um, is able to exp and I think he has the right type of overview of how RPGs and games should work and be run. Heading into the event hall now I am going to be in a game called Coma Ward which I guess is a from what I can understand it's a cooperative it's a cooperative game I'm in the game with these two lovely people. From what I understand, it's a cooperative game where you just woke up in a coma ward and you have to figure something out. like if you mix up the trail at House on the Hill with the long dark and I should have read the description more I don't really like zombie games or survival games very much I don't dislike them at all but they're not my shtick it wasn't a bad game at all it's just not my type of thing we still had fun we won we escaped um, the hospital the idea is that you wake up from a coma and everything is uh, weird like Lovecraftian maybe um, like a little bit like betrayal and you have to try and get out of this hospital usually there's a couple of different scenarios to win the game and we did we escaped uh, I was not the traitor which was really cool so we had fun and um, it's just not my game but if you do like betrayal and if you do like long dark and zombie survival -y things then check out coma ward because I think you'd really enjoy it So it is Friday, it is time for my scheduled like hit of anxiety, depression, down moment and uh, I'm not feeling that super strongly right now. I feel a little bit of it actually just because I was expecting it. I don't know why it's not hitting me as hard as it usually does every single year but, uh, but you know I'm just going to take care of myself. I have had very little sleep. I don't know why it's not hitting me harder. But I've had very little sleep, so I'm going to, um, after this, hit up the quiet room and just hang out there for like a couple of minutes just to recharge my batteries, chill out, and take a moment for myself. And that is very important. Do I, do I look like I feel better? Because I feel better. I love the quiet room. Five minutes, ten minutes, all, all I need. I'm okay. Gordon, this is Aaron. Nice to meet you guys. Thank you. Uh, you came over and said hi. How do you know who I am? Well, we watched your uh, preparing for your first Gen Con video. 
and Yay! it was so helpful. So thank you. So I pushed so it out much. really late, and I didn't think it would be helpful to new players or new attendees. Now I was hoping that maybe next year it would be helpful. So I'm really excited to hear that. That was great. We watched it right before we left, oh, and yeah. we've had we we keep repeating kind of the mantra of. Keep yourself open to new possibilities. Be flexible. Keep an open mind and be flexible. Like not everything's gonna go as planned. And we actually, even this morning, we were getting out of the car and Gordon looked at me. He's like, "Remember, keep an open mind and be flexible." Stay flexible. <laughs> new possibilities. Yeah, and that's all. So Is there anything that hasn't gone right or perfect? Well, there's kind of always something. Yeah. Right. Something always doesn't go to plan. Is there an um, example that you have where something went wrong, but you kept an open mind and parking. then it was great? Parking. parking. Parking was a little bit, we, like the day before, what was it, Wednesday? Yeah. That's when we were like, oh shit, we forgot about parking. Yeah. So we had That's to like big rush one. and figure yeah. that out, and then where are we going, and then there was a like two hour will call Stress, line. stress, stress. Yeah, yeah, just stuff like that. So. The back out of the sky. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you saying hi. Thank, thank you. Oh my you god, so yes. Thank hey, you. thank you. <laughs> hi. Hi. What's your name? Bo. Bo? Cool. What? You just stopped me and you recognized me from my videos, I presume. Why are you holding a pineapple? Uh, I did the crazy kittens. Okay, thing. so I saw some kale on the floor earlier and I was like, this must be an exploding kittens thing, was it? Yeah. Cool. Thank you for saying hi. Um, are you here with other people? Are you by yourself? I'm here with my family. Cool. We came from South Carolina. Very cool. And you were watching my videos? Mm -hmm. That's really cool. How did you find my videos? Well, uh, a couple years ago, I was searching for Gen Con and I happened to come across your videos. Oh man, that's really cool. So I started watching them. That's awesome. Are they helpful? Huh? Did you find them helpful at all? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for saying hi. What's the coolest thing you've done at Gen Con this year so far? Probably the Battle Tech Pods. Oh my god, I love those. I always do those Saturday night when everything, like that's the last minute thing I get to do. Yeah. Well, thank you for saying hi. Yeah. And you're going to be in my video tomorrow. Awesome. <laughs>
taking my hair out of my brain. So after Buka, me, Suwara, Desmond and Loken went back to the Hyatt, to the um, Games on Demand area and played Starcrossed, which is a really fun game about, um, how do you summarize it? Um, you play two people that um, are in a situation where they would like to be together, but cannot be together. And you use a Jenga tower to do certain things and create tension in that relationship. And uh, it's really fun. It's really interesting. And we both played boys. We were touching each other's butts. It was really cute. We were really cute. We were in um, 80s beachfront Miami. It was really fun. It's about one. Affirmative yes from Derek. It's one o'clock. I'm just going to... I did this video and then get up tomorrow for fun times. Good night. Bye. Good night.